Study Guide Solutions Part 2. So on page 172 you can see that they, we have the Chapter 3 review exercises and I picked out a few that I think would be really helpful for you to make sure you know how to do in getting ready for the test. The first one is number 9. We can see something a little bit different. We have r as a function of theta as opposed to y or uh, y as a function of x. And uh, anyway, when you take the derivative of both sides, you're taking the derivative of both sides with respect to theta. And so if you look at the left-hand side, that's what we're seeking to find, the derivative of r with respect to theta. And the right side, remember, when the variable that you're taking a derivative with respect to, when that matches the variable in the, in the expression, then it's just basically like the same thing you've been used to. You know, if it's y equals x squared, then dy dx is 2x. It's the derivative of the left side with respect to x equals the derivative of the right side with respect to x. So anyway, I'm hoping that the r's and thetas aren't throwing you off at all, and if they are, then, then uh, a couple of these problems in this section might help you to see the solutions of, and then you'll see it's just the same thing as what you were doing before with x's and y's. Okay, anyway, uh, the derivative of the secant, we know that to be secant, let's put the equal sign over here, is equal to the secant of whatever, and that's the 1 plus 3 theta, multiplied by the tangent of the whatever, which is, again, the 1 plus 3 theta, and then we're going to multiply that by the derivative of the whatever. And the derivative of the whatever is the derivative of, again, 1 plus 3 theta with respect to theta. And the derivative of 1 plus 3 theta is just 3. And so the, the end result is bringing the 3 out in front, 3 times the secant of 1 plus 3 theta multiplied by the tangent of 1 plus 3 theta, and that's it. <clears throat> Number 16, y equals ln of sine of x and y prime then. We know that the derivative of ln of anything is 1 over that anything, and then we multiply that by the derivative of that anything, and the derivative of the sine of x is the cosine of x. So we could leave it like that, or we could write it as cotangent of x, probably the best way to write it. Now, number 17. Huh. <clears throat> I didn't write it in. Hold on, I'll let me write it in. All right, I'm ready now. Went through and wrote down all the problems for the rest of the problems here. Um, okay, so we're going to be finding the derivative of the left side with respect to... Did I write that down right? 17. R equals ln inverse cosine x. Okay, well, let's find the derivative of the left side with respect to x, equaling the derivative of the right side with respect to x. I don't even need to write that. Taking the derivative of the ln, that's 1 over whatever you're taking the ln of, multiplied by the derivative of the inverse cosine of x, and that is negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. That's it. I yeah, just pause the video real quick, just wanted to double check, and yeah, that's it. So, uh, yeah, you could get rid of the parentheses, but it's not going to, it's not going to change much, so you go ahead and leave it like that. Number 20. Okay, so number 20, I find, should be one of the easiest problems. We know that if y, e I don't know what just happened there. If y equals a to the x, then y prime is equal to a to the x multiplied by ln of a. Okay, so let's use that same concept here. We're going to take the derivative of the left side equaling the derivative of the right side, and the derivative of the right side is 8 to the negative t multiplied by ln of 8, but then we're going to multiply that by the derivative of the exponent, and the derivative of negative t with respect to t is negative 1. So we would write it like this. Normally, the best way to write it would be uh, negative 8 to the negative t and multiplied by the ln of 8. That's it. <coughs> okay. The derivative of... Let's get the purple back. The derivative of y with respect to x is the derivative of this guy with respect to x 
which is equal to, now remember, the derivative of e to the anything is e to the anything. And if that anything is something that's not just x, then we have to multiply by the derivative of it, which is 1 over 1 plus x squared. I'll let you multiply those out, but there you go. Okay, well, we have the, we have to use, again, got to get that purple back. So, again, y prime equals, uh, the derivative of the inverse sine is 1 over the square root of 1 minus whatever that is, which is 1, radical 1 minus u squared. Huh, got a u there. It's not super clear. Anyway, 1 minus whatever it is squared multiplied by du uh, dx. Is that what we want to do here? Multiply by du dx. Uh, oh, what am I doing? No, no, no. Got it. Sorry. I did make some sort of a weird error there. This, <laughs> multiply by the derivative of this thing. Radical 1 minus u squared d. Uh, I'm just sorry, I'm just pausing here because <laughs> usually, uh, usually we don't have this y equaling something u, but we're going to multiply that by u prime if u is, if it's du du, then it's fine. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and, and uh, finish this up here. Sorry. I'm, Gonna brain freeze there for a second. We have one over the square root of one minus. Now the square root of something squared is just that something one minus u squared. Okay, and then the derivative of radical something would be. Let's write it like this: one minus u squared to the one half, and the derivative of one minus u squared to the one half would be one half multiplied by the 1 minus u squared to the negative 1 half, multiplied by the derivative of u squared, sorry, the derivative of 1 minus u squared, which is negative 2u, u prime. Okay. And so, <coughs> this is a big mess. This is ugly. Good grief. So the 2's cancel. And, uh, this is gonna, we're going to have the 1 minus 1 plus u squared, and that's all under the radical. And so how does this simplify? This is going to simplify like this. Radical u squared. Okay, we're going to multiply that by 1 over the square root of 1 minus u squared. And we have the minus sign there yet? Okay, so we have multiplied by negative u u prime, and this u here, so square root of u squared is u, absolute value of u, <coughs> and so then we have the u's canceling, but what if u is negative? Is there anything that tells us that u is going to be positive here? Uh, the u, let me pause here for a second. Okay, I was just looking back at the problem to see if it said that u had to be positive, but no, it doesn't say that, so we cannot cancel the u's because we're not sure if, if, uh, if the u is going to be negative or positive, so uh, we'll just rewrite it like this, negative u, that's the stuff in the numerator, that's that, and then times u prime, we'll get that over there in, in a second, but then we have uh, in the denominator, absolute value of u, multiply by the square root of 1 minus u squared. And I looked in the solution book. The solution didn't have the u prime, but it's kind of a weird thing because we're normally used to seeing u as uh, meaning that u is a function of x. And if this problem was indeed y is a function of u, and we were taking, so I don't know if, just going to clarify something in case this was bothering you. So if this wasn't bothering you, then don't worry about it. It, it actually should bother you. Uh, if we're taking the derivative of y with respect to u, then this y prime really doesn't mean dy dx. It really means dy du. Okay? So if we were taking the derivative of the right side with respect to u, then 
the, the only thing really that would change in this entire problem would be way down here at the bottom, this guy right down here, u prime. We wouldn't need the u prime because u prime would be du du. Okay, if it's du du, well, that's just one. And putting the u prime there isn't going to change anything because, if again, if it's du du, then it's just one. But in the beginning of the problem, because we're normally used to seeing y as a function of x, and also normally we're used to seeing when we see a u, it means that it's a function of x, well, then this, uh, this d, whatever dx, actually I should not have put that u prime right there, I should have waited, but d something dx is going to end up uh, bringing in this u prime. Okay, so that may or may not have confused you even more, but uh, these are things that really bother me when I'm looking at problems like this, problem from the book. It's not really clear that y is a function of u, where u is not a function of x. But uh, anyway, uh, if you had a u prime, then that's the way I would have done the problem. If you didn't have a u prime, hopefully you understood why you weren't supposed to have the u prime. So that's the main thing, is that you understand when the u prime is supposed to be in there and when it's not. Okay? So let's move on to the next problem. y equals square root of the stuff that you see. So obviously you can see that. y prime equals, I'm going to, oh, actually I'm not going to write y prime. Uh, I'm going to write y. I'm going to write it a little bit differently. y equals x squared minus 2x to the 1 half. Now, for this particular problem now, we're supposed to be trying to find the equation of the tangent line to this curve at the at, at where x is equal to 3. Now, we don't know what the y value is yet. We don't really care what the y value is yet, but we will. Uh, remember, this. the most important thing to keep in mind is we need to know what the slope is and we need to know what the coordinates of the point are in order to come up with our... Um, our equation for our line. Because it's all we're doing here is we're just trying to find the equation of a line. Now, the, in this case, in part A, the line happens to be the tangent line. Okay, so that's what we're trying to find, the equation of the tangent line. Well, we already know one piece of information, and that one piece of information is that x equals 3. We don't know anything else. Okay, so we're going to have to find that. Well, if we wanted to find the y, we could plug in the the 3 to the in, in for x, because that's how you find the y. You plug in x, because it says y is a function of x. And that's so interesting how the human brain works, because back in Algebra 1, if I said, here's y, and I said, here's x, find y, you would plug, y, you'd plug 3 in for x, and you would get that y equals the square root of 9 minus 6 which is equal to the square root of 3. And so you would get that. You would get 3 comma radical 3. All right. So, but, you know, it's interesting. As soon as students start trying to find the equation of the tangent line, they do all this work to find the slope of the tangent line, and then they don't know how to find the y. Well, I'm just here to tell you that it's the same thing that you did back in Algebra 1, and I hope that that's not what causes you to have issues with these kinds of problems. So anyway, the last piece of business here is to figure out what the m is. Well, the m is the slope. The slope is the derivative at when x is equal to 3. Okay, so let's find that slope. First we have to find the derivative. The derivative is 1 half times x squared minus 2x to the negative 1 half multiplied by the derivative of what's inside, which is 2x minus 2. Well, y prime at x equals 3 then would be 1 half times 3 squared is 9, 9 minus 6 is 3, and that's to the negative 1 half, and then 2 times 3 is 6, 6 minus 2 is 4. You might notice I'm talking fast. I've got 30 seconds less to get, uh, left to get under my 15 minutes. So we have 2 over radical 3. Okay, so there's our slope. Got to get this in. Got 15 seconds. Okay, so there's our slope. So we have y minus y1 y minus radical 3 equals slope times x minus x1, and there we go. Put a box around it, 
and 1457 